Welcome to Ships Tips episode 12. Now on this episode, as you can see, I've brought you to a great big reservoir. It's called Boddington's. Everybody knows Boddington's. It's a fantastic fishery for catching carp on the Mefford feeder. You'd have to excuse the road noise because we are right by a road. But today, I've got here this morning. It's frosty. The water is really, really cold. So I know I'm going to have to fish at range to catch these carp. But the most important thing about carp is such as Boddington's is what bait you're using. So first thing I do is run you through the baits and also how I've prepared the baits for today. I'll run you through the baits that I'm going to be using today. The first thing I've done is my micro pellets. I've done some pro feed and some fin perfect. It's something I've been doing for quite a while, mix them together. But you've, you can see in there, there's a few flecks and that's fluoro rocks. It's a great little, you get these little tubs, you can add them in. I just done them with, with me pellets this morning when I soaked my pellets. And it gives that little fleck in there. So obviously we're gonna be fishing with bright oak baits today, I think. And it's just sort of something that the carp can pick out. So that's obviously what I'm gonna be putting around the feeder. Whilst we're talking about the two mils, there's options, you know, I've got my bait booster there, which I love putting on my two mil pellets but there's also the option of putting it straight on the method. So once I've molded my method, I've also got some haze and I've also got some lava. This is the stuff that I'm gonna be putting on my method feeder if I need to. But going on to the hooker baits, really, really important on venues like Boddington's. You know, I've got some sinkers, I've got some um, wafters. Nice thing about them, you get three different colors. So there's lots of options, you know, yellow, orange, pink, and then we've also got some washed out ones because if, if if i think the carp aren't coming to like real bright hook baits you can put these washed out versions on sometimes it just catches you more fish so little options like that on a big reservoir uh, big reservoir like bonneton can be really really important so i'm itching to get going i'll run you through all the little tips that i found out over many years about method feeder fishing let's get going i can't wait That's the first bite I've had since we've started. I've actually started about 40 meters, something like that. I didn't um, measure anything up. I just think big reservoirs like this, you can start it at a distance that you think. You know, obviously taking in the conditions, it's cold this morning. That color has gone out of it. You can see me keep net, like literally all the way down. So I started off at 40 meters, cast out twice, left it there like 20 minutes per cast, nothing. I've just gone out to 60 meters. I thought, no, I don't fancy it. I just went out straight out to about 60 meters. Cast out, I actually put some haze on my feeder and a little, little twitch like that. And I said to Jake, the cameraman, I said, someone had a look at that then. And I said, well, I've won this chuck. And I chucked that again. Clipped up, I obviously clipped up at 60 as well. And then this cast, literally it was there for about four minutes with a eight mil yellow bandam on, a sinking bait as well, actually. 
It feels like a good fish. I'm using a, a 10 pound shot leader, sinking mono, the six pound main line, because obviously that's going to help you get your distance. And you just see the shot leader gone in the, just felt that then go in the eyes. I've got a 12 foot six, 80 gram distance master. It's a great rod. You know, you can see the bend on that. It's absolutely perfect. I'm not sure how big this is. It don't feel like a big Bonnington's fish, but a nice early carp is great to be honest because you never know on these big you know never know on these places they can turn off and turn on oh, it's actually a common which is nice i'm not messing about i've got 019 power line bottom to a size 12 mcm barbless hook it's not a bad fish just getting on for 10 pound got a large in got a large elasticated ics method on which i'll show you in a minute it's not far off a £10 actually. Never going to come off of there, that's for certain. Oh dear, never going to come off. Let's hold him up. Get that out of the way, nice and safe for a second. Although I certainly don't want one of them hooks got in my finger, that's for certain. They're so sharp. Great hooks for this sort of fishing, you know, long distance. Get that out of the way. Try and hold him up in this lovely sunny day here at Bollington's. Freezing cold, that fish. I think the temperature has dropped so much over the last week. Look at that. It's the first bite of the day. Let's get him back and get some more. Woo! So we just had that first fish and just putting a new band them on. Just drilled the hole out a little bit and then I can just spin that round so the band them goes on. It's never gonna come off, which is important when you're waiting for bites. I've got a little just me little nail clippers there and I just push that eye so it's right in the bait. That's how I like it. So everything's hidden. I know we're you know we've got a bigger con, but I do like that right in. Like that. Perfect. And on on that cast, I actually filled the mould up probably about three quarters with the two mils. Put my hook bait in the middle. Just fill that mould up. I didn't squeeze it on so hard that time. Just mould that in. I give it a nice squeeze, but not like rock hard, because it's not that deep, Bollington's. And I've got me haze. First cast I had without it, never had a bite. I had that little dink and then that cast. Obviously, caught on just putting two little stripes on it. You can put on whatever you want, really. Like that, nice and easy, nice and quick. Let that sit on the feeder. Give that a good cast. I've got the sun in my eyes at the moment. Lovely. Let that go down. really important to use a stopwatch i mean that was four minutes so i always keep that in my mind now obviously it might you know, obviously you're not going to get one every five well, it'd be nice to get one every four minutes admittedly so i mean it'll stop watch really important you can learn so much from that and i get loads of people contact me on facebook and say there's that for stopwatch has helped me so much well, it doesn't matter what you're catching whether you're catching bream or carp <clears throat> So that was like, like I said, two casts at like 40 meters. Just didn't fancy it at all. I've not seen anything top, and that's telling you as well. I think it's going to be difficult. So I've unclipped and gone straight out to like around about 60 meters. Like I said, I had that little knock first cast, which again was after about I looked at me watch when I had that little little touch, and that was about five minutes. And then the second cast, around about four minutes, I've up my first carp. But it might be the stage where you have got a cast. And don't worry, sometimes on these venues, it's not about casting down the same area. Sometimes you can cast it slightly to the right, slightly to the left. If it's one of them days when they don't want to feed, when they don't want to come, you know, they don't want to come to any bait. It just, you have got to cast about a bit. So it's not just casting at distance. I and mean, if you get a couple of fish on one spot 
and yet then you stop before you go out any further maybe chuck it over to the right a little bit so there's little things like that you can try but it's nice you know it's you know bollington's like any big reservoir with carp in you know like i said some days you can catch them short you can catch a huge weight but it is nice to fish at distance and start messing them out with all your different baits and normally you do find a little solution where you can get a few bites and that's what this is all about so i've got a, a large ics method on now i've got an elasticated stem and in that stem is a 14 dura hollow so it is up for the job you know i could probably catch 20 30 fish on that no problem at all which i don't think i'm going to catch today I just don't think it's going to be that good with the, with the change in weather. And you'll always find that. You could come back to Bollington's when everything settles down, you know, when we've had a few frosts and everything's settled, and you could probably absolutely catch a load again. But that changeover period, it's like sort of spring to summer. It does go real funny sometimes. You know, the, like I said, the water's quite clear. And uh, it, it does affect them a lot, but it's still nice to, you know, you get the rod right, the reel, the lines fishing at distance it don't get better to be honest i really enjoy it well i just had my second bite now next cast that took roughly about 15 to 16 minutes so i tried to cast sort of very close to the last cast which is nice exactly the same setup loading up with two mils yellow band them and just put two a little bit of that haze on it and that gives you the confidence now you know you've got to mess about a bit sometimes you know it takes you a while to get bites but when you can do something like that that's what's so enjoyable about this sort of fishing once you find that hook bait color putting a few additives on makes a huge difference especially on a day like today because it's going to be hard it's obviously going to be hard i'm not sure how big this is So as long as you've got a nice rod, like an 80 gram rod, like a 520, 620 reel, it holds plenty of line. It's quite standard kit really. 45 gram feeder, so it's obviously we're fishing at range and also that helps you up the fish at range because obviously them fish, once they take your hook bait, they're actually got to drag the 45 gram feeder. So really, it feels like a real small fish, that. Yeah, never little common. We say little, but that's probably a real small one for this this uh, this lake. See the big yellow band in his chops? Let's bring him around that side. Oh, he's not bad. He's probably eight pound. Lovely condition, though. And they're not fighting that hard. Them two I've had, I've literally, you know, when you've hooked them out there, they've been fighting like bream. And that's probably because they're freezing cold now. I won't hold him up. I'll just hold him up in the net. Probably about eight pound. Lovely condition, though. Just go careful with him on that. On the rocks down here. That's lovely. Two fish and two chucks. Band them still perfect on there. So I'll just run through again. So I've got my bait boost on me two mils, three quarters fill the mould, hook bait in the middle, because that obviously sits in the, the gap in the feeder, which it's designed to do. And I said I don't I haven't squashed them on really, really hard in the last two casts. Just a nice squeeze, not overdoing it. Just peel a bit of line off the clutch. I'm going to show you exactly what I've done. Bit of haze. Like that. You can rub it in if you want, but don't worry about it. I'm not doing that. Let's go there again. So I'm not going to, obviously I've clipped up it. The distance. It's a clip. Let it go down. Not very deep, Bollington's. Probably only say it's probably about 10 or 11 foot, I would say that. Onto your rests. And just let the line sink. Set me a little stopwatch. Mess about, I've got a tub of water there so I can keep them pellets. 
dead right in there. And then if you want to just add a little bit of, I just add this as I go along, a little bit like that. Just to give it that extra smell. And it also makes your pellets just stay nice all through the day. So you add a little bit of water, a little bit of bait booster. Mix that around that first couple of inches of pellets. You don't have to, you don't have to do the whole lot. That first couple of inches is obviously that's the, that's the pellets that you're going to be using. So just make sure they're right. And it's weird. I said to Jake, I said the last. I just fancied it. I had that little little indication which didn't develop. And I said to Jake, I said I got a good feeling about the next cast, and then we caught one. It's strange, and that's what this sort of fishing's like. I mean, some days you can obviously go out and it can be really, really good. It can be really, really hard. But when you can mess about with them, few little bits of bait, a little bit of additive, and you start catching, there's nothing better. So I just see the line coming together now. It's just starting to sink. And you don't have to tension your tip up, because like I said, I'm fishing the elasticated feeder, so obviously... The fish hook themselves against the weight of the feeder, which is 45 grams, which is quite a lot. And the bites aren't really fierce because we're fishing at range. The bites were like that. Both bites have been like, oh, I'm on, pick me up. You know, it's not like proper. When I come here and done some filming a while back, back in when it was warmer, I think it was probably last year, the bites were unbelievable. I mean, you'd lose your rod if you weren't careful. This time of year, obviously a lot colder. Uh, fishing at range, I mean, if we were fishing a lot shorter, if we could catch shorter, the bites would probably be really aggressive. But I don't think that's going to happen today. But, you know, two and two casts, nice. It just gives you the confidence now. But then going through my mind, if I have a couple more casts there, I'll probably peel like another seven to ten metres off and have another cast again. And that's what this fishing's about on these venues this, uh, in the winter time they you know sometimes they just they just don't come back to where there's a little clump of food they're just you've got a cast again where there's nothing there and hopefully the fish will come to your bait you can't quite work it out in your head sometimes why they do that but there's a lot of big waters like this and it's the same with bream sometimes when they don't want to come to bait you've got to go to them so that's that's exactly what it is but hopefully we'll have another fish in the, in the next sort of 15 minutes. But that's a nice, you know, that's why I use a stopwatch. First bite, first little indication I had it didn't develop was five minutes. Next cast, four minutes, I've caught one. The next cast, roughly about the same area, it took 15 minutes. So that gives you a guide on when you might get your bite, but it also gives you a guide, which is probably most importantly, is to when to move. So if I have a couple of casts, 20 minutes in the same spot, I'll then probably move. So that's what it's telling you. That's the most important part of this sort of fishing. Well, I've got my third carp on now. And it was strange, I'd cast out, I had them two, them two commons. This feels like, it's like a slightly better fish as well, this one. And I've waited then for 20 minutes. The third cast on that spot, I waited 20 minutes, wound back in. Because I never had a bite, and I thought, well, I'll have one more cast, maybe two more casts on that spot. But I've wound back in, done exactly the same process as what I showed you last time, and then nine minutes that was. I had a tiny little indication like that. I said, that's Jake. Oh, I said, look, I might have missed my opportunity then. And about a minute later, the tip's just gone round and got me third carp on. And that's what this is like. It's sort of quite technical fishing, really, but it's ever so enjoyable. I mean, obviously it's enjoyable catching fish, but when you're on a big lake like this, catching big carp, there is something about it. And if I live closer, I'm, I'm sure I'd be here fishing. You know, they have these Paris competitions and stuff on there. I would definitely be coming and fishing it more often. So I've got that 14 dual hollow in my stem, which I think is perfect for these size carp. I normally fish a 12 on a normal commercial way. This one's fighting back a bit. So just keep a nice bend in the rod not overdoing it because every every carp's important this time of year i 
they're just plodding really they're plodding they're fighting like a great big bream it's like you've got a 15 pound bream on oh look at that proper kick then that's what we want see the big boil out there now You never know what your bollings is either. You know, last time I come, I caught one 20 odd pine. There's plenty of them in here, which would be absolutely superb to catch another one of them on camera, especially on match gear. It's definitely a bit bigger, this one. And them circle looks, them MCM, size 12. They're absolutely perfect for these size fish. Just pre tied I've just got them off the mag store system. Didn't even tie any up. Don't get any easier. And just enjoy it, you know, enjoy it. You know, it's a nice day today. Yeah, it has been really cold. And some days you might only get three or four bites, but it is, it is proper enjoyable. Got a big landing net as well. So it's a bit bigger than what I normally use on my normal commercial fishing. Just got to watch it down the inside. There is lots of rocks. I'm not exactly sure how far they go out, but just trying to keep it up, keep the rod a bit higher as it's on the inside. Proper scrap this one. Got a three ounce tip in here as well because a lot of people ask me that well, you know what, what tips you uh fishing with and i always forget to say and i got a three ounce tip in here because it is about you know getting your distance even though even though i only started at 40 meters you know when you want to go out and to be honest one rod can do most things on this lake you know you get yourself like i said 80 gram rod for that sort of distance i'm fishing and then you might want one sort of 100 gram if you really want to go out at extreme distances but i think 80 gram is like absolutely smack on for this sort of fishing i'm doing today never, never common could do one of those big bonington's mirrors to be honest definitely feels a bit bigger than the other two though normal common fight twice as hard lovely fishing don't mind catching, you know, you don't mind getting the odd bite when you're just catching fish like this at long range. It's just something about it. So I'm not rushing it, just keeping nice pressure on it. Totally different to your normal commercial fish, you know, it's completely different. Just something about it. You can see why people want to come in fish here. Proper scrap thing, this one. He's had his uh, he's had his wheat picks this morning. That's for certain. Am I about to go to the fish today? I don't think they're going to come to me. God, dear, that is proper. I'm going to go. So sorry about the road noise behind us because we are on the damn wall so we have got a road quite close to us there's plenty of farmers about at the moment god my right arm's starting to hurt can't believe this one's fighting that hard never to really come in so easy And like I said, I thought I missed the opportunity there. We had a little tiny indication. I thought, oh, the jet. I said, we missed that one. We, you know, it's obviously come in and nudge the feeder or something. And luckily, um, whether that's a different fish or not, we'll never know. But here we go. Yeah, if I see that big yellow band I'm stuck out of his mouth, that's a better one. That's a double figure one, that. Oh, yes. Lovely fish, that. That's the ones we want. Oh yeah, probably probably eleven pound I would have thought that. That'd be 
this gorgeous. Let's get the look out of him in a minute. I'm going to hold him up because he's absolutely perfect condition. Let's get that out of the way so I don't get that in me, in me fingers. See if he'd behave yourself. Yeah, that's a good, that's probably about £12 that I would say. There you go, look at that. Fantastic common cart from Bonington's Reservoir. Absolutely stunning. Great fishing, you know, long range method. You can have some, you know, absolutely fantastic. Lovely and clean. And not really, not a mark on him. Let's get him back. I've had one more smaller comment on that 60 meter line. I've had two casts now. I've left that there for sort of 17, and this this has actually been out there for about 25 minutes. So I've made a decision, I'm going to go a little bit further. So I'm going to unclip before I wind in, and I'm going to peel probably about five metres of line off. I'm not going to measure it, and then clip back up again, and hopefully we can get a couple more you know it's been it's hard fishing it's hard fishing and there's a couple of guys to my left they're not really i think they've caught one carp so you know doing the going through the motions messing about your bait definitely going a different distance i hope it well, was definitely made a difference there's no doubt about that so i'm just going to stick with what i've been doing Nice big eight mil bandum, a yellow one. Give that a bit of a squeeze, but not too hard. Just give myself a little bit more slack line. Get that haze on it. I think that's made a big difference as well, putting that haze on. I mean, not every fish I've caught, I've had this going on the feeder as well. So, so just blonk that on willy nilly. And this is probably about 70, 70 metres now, I would say. It's a nice whack, that 10 pound shot leader. Beautiful. And with that rod now, with that feeder on, with the wind, the wind is off me back a bit, so that's helping. I could probably get up to sort of 80, 90 metres with that, with that setup, I would say. Obviously, if you had the wind in your face, it'd be a lot different. Let's get my stopwatch again. I mean, in hindsight, I wish I'd started. I've probably wasted an hour this morning because I thought, you know, last time I'd come, I actually caught some fish at 40 metres, but the water was really coloured that day. You could only sort of see like that far down and it was like really brown. Today is completely different. You could probably see me keep net, you know, that far down. So, big difference. But you never know, some days you could start at 40 metres and you might get a couple straight away and you work your way out and obviously trying to keep the fish coming. But today, I wish I'd started it sort of, in hindsight, 50, 60 metres and then gone a bit further. But, you know, that's, that's fishing. That's why we go fishing. We just don't know what's going to happen on the day. So hopefully, I'll have the same response as what I had when I went to sort of sort of 50 meters to 60 sort of 70 meters and every bite every bite the four fish i've caught it sort of 60 odd meters every fish has become between well the, the quickest bite i've had has been four minutes i've had two at nine minutes and one at i think it was 16 minutes so they're a bit all over the place but it like i said i'm learning more about you know, to li I'm not leaving the feeder there too long, or not changing, or trying not, you know, trying to change it the right time. That's what that stopwatch is all about. And I said, not, I'm not really sort of um, tightening up on the feeder because like I said earlier it was, you know, it's a 45 gram feeder. I'm fishing elasticated stem. The last bite I had was actually a proper rat round, even though I was fishing right out there. It just sat there like that, like literally a blink of an eye, and the rod's like straight. The other three have all been these sort of like a, a bit like a brain bite, really. But you never know, you know, every, every carp. I think a lot of the carp here, they hook themselves, they're nodding, trying to dislodge the hook. 
and then your, your tip is literally doing that. But you've got a lot of stretch in the line. You know, when you're fishing them sort of distances, you've got a hell of a lot of stretch in the line. But it's really enjoyable. You know, it's not hectic fishing, but it is winter cart fishing at distance. And other days you might come, you might catch a load more, you might have days when you really, really struggle. But it's just that change over time. It was always the same this time of year. On, not just big venues like this, but on little venues. It can be really, really difficult this, this time of year. But I'm just hoping now that we can, you know, catch one or two more in before we before we finish up. But I've not really I've not really thought about I've got some little I've got I did get a little feeder out at the start, a little small ICS. But like I've said on my films before, when I go to a venue where you've got to wait for bites. I always find, for me personally, a bigger feeder can be better because you're putting a little pile of bait down, you're sitting there for longer. And I, I don't know, it's just, perhaps it's just me, but I, I just prefer a bigger feeder when I'm fishing for bigger carp and not many bites. If the fish were really having a go today, I'm sure you could probably fish both and you still catch plenty. But when it's, when it's like this, when it's more difficult, I said you are waiting for bites, I think a bigger feeder, I think it just catches you more carp. Obviously a bigger feeder is a lot more difficult to cast because it's a bigger feeder, it's got to go through the air. If I put that little 45 gram ICS on there, I can make that go out like a bullet. But um, if you, I said, if you use the right equipment, even chucking a, a large feeder out there is not a problem. And I won't leave it that long. I reckon sort of 20 minutes maximum. I'll, uh, I'll wind in and cast again, even though I've just unclipped and gone a bit further. I'm not going to leave it there for much longer than probably sort of 20 minutes. That'd be the maximum. And I wouldn't know that unless I've had a stopwatch. So that, they're, the little, they're the sort of things you've got to think about. Some days a stopwatch is pointless. Some days the cart, you know, the fish won't feed at all. And you've literally got to sit there and sit there and sit there and you might just get a bite out of the blue. But today I've learned from having that little watch that, you know, 20 minutes, maybe a fraction longer is probably the maximum I'll leave it out there. If not, I'll be clipping up again a little bit further. Well, there you go. If you want proof of something that works, that's it. So that's obviously sort of five meters past and 518 on the clock. It's actually swimming towards me, this one. And that's what this place is like. A little bit careful this one, I don't know what it's doing. It's either a carp or a giant a giant roach. We actually caught a massive roach earlier. Oh yeah, that feels better. That's a good fish that. Not a good bite either. You know, little sort of like I said, they're they're so far out. Like one bite I've had today, which has actually been an absolute screamer, all the other ones have been really slow, lethargic. Not sure actually whether this is a good fish or not. They're coming to the top as well quite quick. So five, just over five minutes for that. And then we were sat 45, yeah, 40 minutes. I think I had two casts on that other line. With nothing, just gone past. It's always hard to get right because you think, oh, if I'd have just not, if I'd have done that earlier or, you know, cast out, hook one and gone a bit further, but it's hard to do that. That's what keeps you sort of thinking and, you know, that's why we go fishing. It's always gets home and think, oh, if I'd have done this and done that. 
But the most important thing is you're enjoying it. You know, it's enjoying catching big fish at long range. Oh, and it's a Maureen 118. Nice big Maureen the mirror, that. Looks like a double. Over a double, that one. See that big yellow band? Of... Yes, that'd do nicely. So that's unbelievable. You know, when you've sat there for 40 minutes, two casts. Yeah, it's a good fish, that. Go like five, six metres further. Six minutes, just under six minutes. And I've caught another one. It's a lovely fish, that. I'll get the hook out of him. I mean, them MCM hooks have been absolutely brilliant. Never, never even felt like you're going to lose a fish. Let's get that out of the way. The last thing I want to do is get one of them hooks jammed in me. Jammed in me fingers. But like, you know, every bite I've had today has been with the haze on the feeder. But what a great fish. For well, the last fish today. It's been difficult, but distance, like I said, has been the most important part of today. Putting that haze on my feeder. Look at that. Beautiful Bonington's carp. Probably like 12 or 13 pound. Absolute stunner. So I hope you picked up some nice tips on long range method feeder fishing, such as a place like Bonington's. Let's get him back and I'll show you the rest of the carp in a few seconds. Well, there you go. There's five Bonington's carp there. Beautiful fish. Probably getting on for about 50 pounds, so you don't need many fish here. But most importantly today, distance, putting the haze on the method feeder. I'm not going to keep them out. Let's get them back. Hope you've enjoyed the film, and I'll see you on the next episode.